So on the screen here, we have an equation in its general form, and we have lowercase a equals capital A sine, open brackets, omega t plus phi. And underneath, I've just identified what each of those things are. A is the amplitude, as we saw earlier. Omega, this coefficient in front of t here, is called our angular frequency. And phi is our phase angle, which will cause either a lead or lag time, depending on whether it's positive or negative. And in the top right hand corner, we have three equations for the wave properties. First of all, we have an equation that states that omega equals 2 pi f. Now in that formula there, f is the frequency. And as we saw previously, frequency represents the number of complete cycles per second. Now if we wanted to determine the frequency or the number of cycles per second, then we can use our value of omega. And we see rearranging that first formula to make f or frequency the subject, we get omega over 2 pi. So we can use this coefficient in front of t here to find our frequency. Now another important property of the wave is if we know the frequency, we can determine the periodic time. And periodic time is the time taken for one complete cycle. And we can see there that all we need to do is 1 over the frequency or the inverse of the frequency. And that will give us our periodic time, which is expressed in seconds. Frequency is expressed in hertz, which is basically seconds to the minus 1. So let's look at this in relation to a practical example. So here we have a current expressed as I equals 3.5 sine 120 pi t plus pi over 4. Now from inspection there, we can already see that our amplitude is 3.5, and that will be amps because it's a current. We can also see that our angular frequency is 120 pi, and we can also see that our phase angle is pi over 4, plus pi over 4. We can calculate our frequency because our frequency is omega over 2 pi. Well, 120 pi over 2 pi is the same as 120 over 2, which is 60, 60 hertz. And 60 hertz is the frequency of the domestic supply in the US. But now we can also calculate our periodic time, the time for one cycle. And our time for one cycle is going to be 1 over 60, or 0.0167 seconds. So every 0.0167 seconds, we will get a complete cycle of our wave. Now the other thing that we might want to do here is determine when this function first reaches its peak value. So let's just clear some space. Now what we can see here is that we have a sine function with an amplitude of 3.5. But what we can also see is that we have a phase angle. Now recall that if it's a positive phase angle, our graph is going to be shifted to the left. So what we have is we have a sine wave, which is offset. Now we might want to know how long it takes for us to reach our first peak here. So what is this time here? Now what we know is that when we reach that first peak, I must be 3.5, because I is increasing. I is represented on our y-axis here. So y is increasing from 0 to 3.5, and then it's decreasing from 3.5 back to 0, and then down to minus 3.5. It's oscillating up and down. Now one way of doing this would be to set I equal to 3.5, and then rearrange the equation to make T the subject, and find the value of T that gives our first peak value of 3.5. But there's actually a neater way of doing this. If we re-sketch the graph, and this time we're sketching the graph of sine t. So we have t along this axis. We know that the graph of sine t repeats every 2 pi seconds. Now because this is a periodic function, we know that this point here must be pi. And we know that this point here must be pi over 2. That's where our peak value is.
We also know that this value here is 3 pi over 2, or 1 and a half pi. And what we can actually do is set our bracket, this bracket here, equal to pi over 2 to find our peak value, because our peak value occurs at pi over 2. And if we wanted to find our first minimum value, or our negative peak down here, then all we would do is set that bracket equal to 3 pi over 2. So let's first of all find our maximum peak by setting the bracket equal to pi over 2, and then we'll find our negative peak by setting the bracket equal to 3 pi over 2. Okay, so for our first maximum peak, that bracket, the 120 pi t plus pi over 4, equals pi over 2. Now the first thing that I need to do to each side, if I want to get t on its own, is subtract pi over 4 from each side. Subtracting pi over 4 from my left hand side leaves me with 120 pi t. And subtracting pi over 4 from my right hand side gives me pi over 2 minus pi over 4. Well pi over 2 is the same as a half pi and pi over 4 is the same as a quarter pi. So a half pi minus a quarter pi just leaves me with a quarter pi. So I get 120 pi t equals a quarter pi or pi over 4. Next I need to divide each side by 120 pi. And dividing the left hand side by 120 pi is just going to leave me t. But dividing the right hand side by 120 pi is in effect going to place this 120 pi on the bottom of the fraction. So what we'll end up with is t equals pi over 4, that's what we had originally, but that bracket, the 120 pi, needs to go onto the bottom here. Now there's a simplification we can do here because we have pi on the top and we have pi on the bottom. And if we cancel those out, all we'll be left with on the top is 1. So let's write that out. What we have is 1 over 4 times 120. Well, 1 over 4 times 120 equals 2.083 times 10 to the minus 3, and our units of time are seconds. But we can tidy that up. That's the same as 2.083 milliseconds. So that's the time taken to reach our first peak. Let's repeat that, but this time we're going to find our first negative peak. So we're going to do exactly the same, except we're going to set the bracket equal to 3 pi over 2. So I've switched colours here, just so that we can see the differences. But the steps are exactly the same. The first thing I need to do is subtract pi over 4 from each side. And once again, that leaves me with 120 pi t. If we have 3 pi over 2, which in effect is 1 and a half pi, and we subtract pi over 4, which in effect is a quarter pi, what I'm going to be left with is 1 and a quarter pi. And another way of writing 1 and a quarter is 5 over 4. So we have 120 pi t equals 5 pi over 4. You can leave that as a decimal if you prefer. Our next step then was to divide by 120 pi. And dividing by 120 pi, place this onto the bottom of this fraction. So we get t equals 5 pi over 4 times 120 pi. And if you recall, we cancelled the pi values out, this time leaving us with 5 over 4 times 120. 
and 5 over 4 times 120 equals 0 0.0104 seconds. But I'm going to express that in milliseconds, and that gives us 10.4 milliseconds. So our first negative peak is at 10.4 milliseconds. Now if you prefer you could have worked in decimals, so you could have expressed this as a decimal, and you could have expressed 120 pi as a decimal. If you do choose to work in decimals, then I recommend working to perhaps four or five decimal places to avoid any rounding errors. Working with pi in this way eliminates any rounding errors. So the last thing that we may want to do is find the time taken for this function to first reach a given value. Let's say as an example, we want to know the time taken for this function to first reach 3 amps. Well, what we'll need to do is set this function equal to 3, or 3 amps. So what we'll have is 3 equals 3.5 sine of 120 pi t plus pi over 4. And we're going to need to rearrange this to make t the subject, or to find t that corresponds with that value. The first thing then is to divide each side by 3.5, and in doing so, we'll be able to isolate sine of that bracket. So that gives us 3 over 3.5 equals sine of 120 pi t plus pi over 4. Now the next thing that we need to do to isolate the bracket and get the bracket on its own is take sine to the minus 1 of each side. Taking sine to the minus 1 of the left hand side, I'm going to get sine to the minus 1 of 3 over 3.5. And my right hand side is just going to be the bracket 120 pi t plus pi over 4. Now I can isolate the term that contains t, this 120 pi. And the way that I'm going to do that is by minusing pi over 4 from each side. And so what I'll get is sine to the minus 1, 3 over 3.5, minus pi over 4, equals 120 pi t. So let's simplify that left hand side. So I'm just going to plug that into my calculator. I have sine to the minus 1 of 3 over 3.5. Just taking care to ensure that my calculator is in radians since we're working in radians. And that gives me an answer of 0 0.2 to 5 decimal places. But I'm going to keep the full calculator answer in the display. And that equals 120 pi t. So what I'm going to do next is divide each side by 120 pi, but I'm also going to make t the left hand side of my equation since that's the thing I'm trying to find. So dividing by 120 pi and switching sides, I get t on its own equals 0.24430 divided by 120 pi. Now I'm going to run that through my calculator, but I'm going to use my full calculator answer, divided by 120 pi, and I get t equals 6.48022 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds. And if I multiply that by 1,000, I'll get an answer in milliseconds of 0 0.648 milliseconds. So three decimal places there. We can check this answer, and the way that we would check it is by returning to our original function and inputting a value of t here equal to 0 0.648 milliseconds, or 6.48 times 10 to the minus 4. And when you do that, you'll find that you get an answer, give or take with a little bit of rounding, equal to 3 amps, proving that the answer is accurate.